Alcohol Beyond This Point Podcast. This isn't two podcasters talking business. This is two business guys trying to podcast. So right before, literally two seconds before we just started rolling, um, Tyler's like, hey, do you want to see a video of my entire family of cousins dying? And yeah. showed me a video of a car crash where like his aunt, uncle, and three cousins all died. Yeah. And you just I, got back from a funeral? And I just got back from a funeral seconds ago. Yep. Just finished talking with uh, a close friend whose father's in palliative care and uh, listening to a podcast um, where the first two words of it is war crimes. <laughs> and uh, it's sleeting and snowing and r- kind of rainy, really windy. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, a good, it's a good day overall, I guess you could say. <laughs> Uh, on that <laughs> cheery note, welcome to Alcohol Beyond This Point, the podcast where we debate business topics oh, both sober and drunk to see if we come to the same conclusion. And if you have to guess why we drink today, it is because we do this every week. We do do, do do. Also, um, first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, we got kind of sloshed yesterday. Well, you did. I don't remember how many beers I had. This is what happens. I hope the mic picked that all up. This is what happens when I don't drive. So I usually drive, right? But instead of driving a Benz, you were driving a piece of shit U-Haul. That's exactly like the piece of shit I drive every day. And uh, it was such a rough ride that all your beers fucked up now. No. Um, so, well, maybe. But... Uh, so I usually drive, but JL, since moving in with me, he opts to drive a lot. And because we live in the same house, we carpool, obviously, because we go to a lot of the same events. So the last few events that we've gone to, he's been gracious enough to volunteer to drive. And um, so I've been drinking a lot more <laughs> when I go out. Any reason. Yeah. Well, and I, so I, I tweeted the other day, follow me, vote Willows on Twitter. Um for all the uncensored schlots, I mean thoughts, um, I said something like, "I'm gonna, I gotta stop pre-gaming," because the idea of pre-gaming, like drinking, you know, drinks before you go out, is save money and get the same amount of drunk, right? Right. So what I do is like have some pre-drinks, go out and drink just as much as I would have, if not more, because you're not counting. If not more, because I'm already drunk, um, and end up spending more money. And just getting sloppier and embarrassing myself. So. So not a good plan. Yeah. So I'm just going to stop yeah. Yeah. Yeah, doing fair. pre-drinks. Fair, fair enough. Um, but I wanted to bring it up because we went out to a, to a karaoke night. It was our friend's birthday. And uh, not a single person was wearing a mask in the entire bar. Except I mean, for you briefly. Yeah. Well, I was putting one on to go to the bathroom. Um, and I've, I've been pretty open about this. I'm mainly doing it for optics. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I always make fun of you, but at the bar you got approached by somebody, which was funny. Yeah. Yeah. Someone came up to me, uh, at the bar and I, I kind of knew them like they're an acquaintance and I hadn't spoken to them in real life for five or six years, but I guess they had said something on Facebook that they thought offended me. Or something, we got in an argument or something, but he came over and apologized for that, which I thought was interesting, because I don't fucking know what he's talking about. Um, and uh, and then said, yeah, man, like, I drink your wine. I've actually, I follow your, like, story now. I, like, learned a lot from you, like, about business and stuff. And they, he's like, I just wanted to say that. I just wanted to say th- sorry. And I'm like, yeah, no problem, man. And he, like, walked away. So, yeah, when y- you guys always laugh when I'm like, hey, people in this city know me. I got to have a good reputation. And then people in this city actually do know me and I do actually need to have a good reputation. <laughs> I so j- I just find it funny when there's an entire bar of people just like screaming moistly at each other and singing and dancing around and having a party. And it's like just the idea that that can happen, but at the same time, it still makes sense to some people to wear a mask to the bathroom. I know why you're doing it, but like the fact that to some people that really matters. Yeah. Is still well, I- pretty funny to me. I was a big proponent for keeping the vaccination cards in bars, like yeah. not letting people in if they weren't vaccinated and then getting rid of the masks in the, in the bar. Cause the mat, like I own a bar and we're a pretty small, intimate little wine bar. Right. So it's like, th- you're pretty close to the people beside you. 
what are you what are you talking about well it's covid doesn't work when you're sitting well, down that's what i mean is that <laughs> it was it, for for nine months i had to enforce people taking off their mask for two hours and then putting it back on to stand up mm-hmm. and i'm like this like even my like i have an immunocompromised a bartender who's we make a lot of our policies like around and for because we want to protect her and protect it like anyone quite frankly right um and even she like it's like does this really make any sense like is this really protecting anyone you know what i mean so um, uh no <laughs> yeah so the best thing you can do is get vaccinated we both are and all my staff is and and then get covid yeah and then whatever right like it is what it is but i just thought it was interesting that or not interesting, but I remember leaning over to you and there were a bunch of people like mosh pit dancing to the fucking karaoke and like, you know, it was, it was just, everyone was screaming and having a good time. And it was just like probably 200 people in the bar all just fucking just, and I'm like, this is like back to normal. Like, this is like, we never left mm-hmm. except now I'm older. And when there was a bunch of like 18 year olds yelling, I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> but other than that. Yeah, I think the only thing different at that bar was, like, they had one of the staircases closed, I guess, so they could, like, funnel people through the hostess stand for vax cards and stuff, but they still hadn't opened up that extra staircase. Well, I noticed they had the uh, arrows, like, the one-way direction arrows. Right. That they had, you could definitely see they tried to peel a couple of them off, and they couldn't get them off, so they just left them. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, well, I mean, this is also one of those shitty bars where, like, a bun- if you actually look at the ceiling... Yeah, like, me and you were looking at the tiles. A bunch of the <laughs> ceiling tiles are all <laughs> fucked up, and one of them looks like it's got, like, a... 10 pound weight on is about to fall through yeah one of them looked like they had a bunch of water like on one side of it yeah that was not ideal but um but hey i missed that i missed shitty bar yeah man like it was it was good and also two dollar tequila tuesdays is now five dollar tequila oh man fucking inflation yeah they used to do two dollar tequilas three dollar beers which if you know we you always hear us bitch about the Manitoba liquor government monopoly. Um, that's like the cheapest you can sell stuff for legally. Yeah. Uh, technically, it's two it's two twenty five a serving in quotations is the minimum. Yeah. So they're ounce shots, not ounce and a half shots. Right. Because standardized shots in Canada are actually ounce and a half. Fun fact. Um, but uh, so that's how they get away with that. Right. But uh, yeah, and now they're like five bucks, which is like still like a decent price. Like a lot of. Um, shots are fucking like six, seven bucks, eight bucks, like for fucking specialty shots at like fancy bars. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, fair. But still, but uh, fucking inflation's killing all of us, man. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about your friend who's doing events in Alberta and they're doing dollar shots. Yeah. Yeah. They're ounce as well, but still, still like you could get fucked for 10 bucks. Yeah. If you drink it fast enough. Yeah. Well, I remember, like, fucking, I always, uh, when I used to play in a poker league, it was just, like, a free roll poker league, and we used to play in, like, little bar, like, just shitty dive bars, mm-hmm. and uh, so some that, of the older people would that, always that's be... That's how one of my workers met his wife. She was, she, was, <laughs> she was the dealer. He was playing poker in a shitty bar with a bunch of old guys. Love it. So, some of the old guys would always be like, oh, yeah, I remember, I remember like, nickel beer night, <clears throat> where you'd fucking bring in a quarter and get five beers. Jeez. Yeah. That'd like, be cool. That'd back be when good. they were like kids, yeah. right? Like, yeah. 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 Which obviously infl- scaled for inflation that's like... Yeah, and they could buck 25 an hour or whatever. Yeah. But still? <laughs> yeah, still. It's like... That's, yeah. It's no, like it, eight, it, nine <laughs> bucks for a fucking pint at a bar now. And that's like... That's an hour of someone's work. Like, a minimum wage is like 12 bucks. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like... <laughs> yeah, as a multiplier, I mean, obviously everybody knows this, but house prices do not match wages in the same manner that they, that they used to. Yeah, inflation's the only thing that... Or uh, wages are the only thing that aren't pegged to inflation. <laughs> Everything else goes up except how much you're paying people. So well, that's interesting. I mean, that's a very anti-capitalist thing for you to say, Willis. Well, I'm a communist now. I thought we got this... Oh, yeah. I've really, really evolved over the uh, over the length Last of this two years. podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. I am, uh, I am a cold-blooded communist now, and I'll go further than that. I think we should kill everyone who's not a landlord. Wait. Wait. Is a landlord? No. Oh. Because if you're, <laughs> if you're not, no, um, I shared, I'll put it on the screen if I remember to. I shared, uh, it's like Squidward fact of the day, and then it's Squidward being like, um, landlords are parasites, but... All par- like all parasites have a use in nature, 
So maybe you just don't understand what landlords do or something like that. <laughs> it's like hmm. based. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good actually. Yeah, yeah I like that. Yeah. No, I I I I'm not I can never be on that side of things where it's like abolish landlords. It's like no, having done the landlording thing, no, there's definitely a requirement for landlording. Whether the state does it or an individual well, does it, it needs to be done. Here's the thing. And the state's bad at it. Here's yeah. Like all the time. Exactly. Like really bad. The the state is the worst at doing all the programs that I want to see in the world. Yeah. For like sure. Like healthcare, we have fucking shit government run healthcare here. Um and then people are always like, Yeah, well the fucking American system, like it's like that's barely fucking private health care either like you know what i mean well, like they, they don't they don't have um they don't have free market either yeah not, it's not all, even remotely close it's yeah. just it's just fucking cronyism is bought and paid for exactly and you know so yeah i don't know but like we we have shitty health care we have no mental health care we have sh- like um government housing here sucks like our prison system sucks like although know, i gotta say as far as the actual programming goes our, uh, I think our government housing is one of the better programs out there. As compared to what? Because what do we do? As compared to pe- most. For people that don't know, what do we do versus, and what does another country do? So uh, it's Manitoba housing. So you can apply for it. And um, I don't know exactly what the qualifications are, but it's a pretty easy process. It's more so, it's based on need in a lot of ways. And they don't have like huge waiting lists. They don't like fucking Ohio literally has an, a lottery and they just pull a certain number of names every couple of years. And then you have a S X amount of months in order to lock down a place or you like lose your lottery ticket basically. Okay. And that's and section eight, right? Yeah. And it's, and section eight is like sometimes private, sometimes public and it's all shit. Yeah. Like it's a, it's just a terrible system. They've been way too rigorous of an inspection process. Cause they've got like, you know, 1905 to 1915 homes. And they're like, you can't, have all the things that all those houses have you have to completely retrofit them and, and no one to, wants to spend the money to do well that. it's just unrealistic to spend the money and it's like incredibly difficult to find those properties so it's like you don't have the properties in place and you have to have um all the inspections passed before you can get approved for section eight and then it's um you know just like just the inspection cycle process was like it was really really rough and very time consuming and it's like it added levels of bureaucracy that just made it super inefficient and to the point where only specialized landlords could actually get into it wow thanks government it was great making everything superfluous and yeah yeah no it was great but if you figured it out for landlords it was fucking great business and everyone you had a bunch of section 8 properties right yeah and it sucked (laughs) yeah it really sucked i mean if for some houses it was awesome but for the older ones at a certain vintage you just couldn't make them in good enough condition. Yeah. Like they were just always breaking down, right? It's like trying to make a fucking trash car your daily driver that just breaks every other day and it's like, okay, yes, you can, but you're better off just buying a new Civic. So then, and then as far as I understand with Manitoba housing, it's like when you get the house, it's like your employer pays the government and then they pay you what's left or something. Uh, more or it's less. Kind of weird. Yeah, it's it's basically, it's based on your, uh, you pay, you pay rent based on your income. Yeah. And the government because pays the remainder, I, however much or little you make. Because Zach's, my business partner, his mother lived in Manitoba housing. Yeah. And he lived with her and she had to kick him out when he turned 18 because as soon as he turned 18, his income got added to her, right. her uh, the family income. And he was working like a part-time pizza delivery job and that would like doubled the rent. Yeah. So they're like, ah, cause yeah. like she was on, um, I guess the equivalent of welfare, as well as being in Manitoba housing, which that's double funny because one department of the government is paying the other one. Yeah. Right? Which <laughs> like, is honestly the more efficient way to do it. It sounds stupid, but it is a more efficient way to do it. What do you think of just like giving everyone a house? Uh, like you turn 18 and they give you a house. I guess. Like, but like the, the it's a big, it's a big how question. Like we're having a fucking supply issue now and there's bidding Yeah, wars. but like a third of the houses in Canada are, are vacant. Yeah, but not in places where people necessarily can or want to live. Yeah, they're all in downtown Vancouver. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like the the vacancy like that's kind of like a misnomer. Like it's the, the you're not having a really high vacancy rate in good school zones that are like pla- affordable places where people want to live. Like there's n- there's no vacancies. Like you have properties that are going up for sale that are selling in days with bidding wars. Like that if that wouldn't happen if there was a 30% vacancy rate. It's that 
That's a good point, actually. Like, it's it's not... There is a supply issue, absolutely. And, I don't know, giving people a house when they turn 18, it's like, okay, who fulfills that? Who plans that? And not everyone wants the same house when they turn 18. It's like, it's better to give maybe someone like a rent credit when they turn 18. Okay. Because then now you allow the market to kind of fulfill the need. And it's like you give a set, which is why like the uh, rent tax, a rent tax credit is a really good idea. What if we had a very generous, we would have $500 a month. Which now they're getting rid of the rent tax credit. Yeah, exactly. But and it, it wasn't $500 a month. It was $500 a year, yeah. but still. But yeah, imagine right. if it was $500 a month until yeah. you turned 22. To kind of get you started. Yeah. Yeah. That would be life changing. Yeah, for sure. You for wouldn't sure. need to reinvent real estate. It's a tax credit. The yeah. system's there. It's fucking simple. Yeah. Like, that. those kinds of things. And if you don't, I guess if it... Well, and then private it landlords... Could, it, maybe s- not even tax credit, but like a, just a, maybe a payment you get because maybe people aren't even earning enough money to get that credit. Like. Yeah. And then like... Because they're not paying taxes anyway. Right. Um, yeah. And then that still incentivizes private landlords to maintain good houses because right. they want people to still rent their house and pay them. But whether the money comes to the government or not... It's irrelevant because yeah, they're it, still getting paid. And if it's tied to and if it's tied to landlording or like sorry, if it's tied to renting, the landlord can have that assurance that the person is going to take that money that's given to them and put it towards rent because that's the only because option if they don't for lo- that money. If they don't, then they lose it. Basically, right. use yeah. it or lose it. Yeah. So no. that's like those kinds of systems work really well. It's it's a simple infusion of cash and like imagine what like imagine how different your life would be. Like imagine how much. Uh, better your financial situation would be as an individual. Like, fuck, that would have been life-changing for me. Yeah. Um, And it's not an insane amount of... Like, we're talking about a very short time frame. We're talking about, like, 18 to 23 of people that need to move out. Most people in that time frame aren't even living out of their home. We do have a program called Rent Assist. Yeah. That'll pay you monthly. Yeah. Uh, It's based on your income. Uh, I was on it for a bit when I would just... It does not work if you are a working person. That's correct. Not really. You need to make under like 15 grand a year to have any um, meaningful... Which is below minimum wage. That's below poverty. Yeah. 17.5 is poverty. Like... Yeah. So that's um, minimum wage in this province is 22, 23,000. Yeah. You need to make like pre-15 to make any reasonable money like because it's a scaling like I, we were i was on it right after i was homeless um to kind of help me get back on my feet and i've been any government program you can use and abuse fucking do it i say this all the time thousand percent as a capitalist steal back any cent they take from you as much as you can fuck them every penny that you get from the government is one less dollar they have to spend on bombing afghani children so when I was on it, I was getting probably two, three hundred bucks a month, right. and I was only making on my tax returns less than ten grand, and I was only getting like two, three hundred bucks a month. Yeah, so that's a good program. It's a great program, but maybe but the, expand the eligibility. but it should just be expanded. Yeah, yeah, and like expand the eligibility, but maybe like have a sl- different scale for maybe ages, like because that age is a very difficult time to kind of build yourself up. It's like. The way America's doing it is even fucking worse. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, I keep hearing about um, there's another, uh, they did another freeze or another extension um, on, like, being able to freeze your student loan debt payments yeah. in the States. And I was just thinking, like, I cannot, I couldn't name a single person that I personally know that has more student debt than they have, let's say, credit credit card or uh, card debt or any other debt. A term of university here is like $4,000. Right. Like, I don't know anybody that has uh, any, any significant amount. I should, now that I really think of it, I don't know anybody that has any student debt. I know a few. But like, but of those people, how many of them have more student debt than they have of any other debt? No, none. Right. Yeah. So it's like, it's it's kind of a non-issue. For sure. Down there, it's like, you have more student debt than any other debt even including medical debt when people aside from mortgages people are so dumb they need help maybe (laughs) okay so here's the thing in america the minimum payment that you have to make towards your student loan is less than the interest right 
and then a lot of these people, these students don't, aren't, I guess, smart enough to budget or anything. So they just pay the minimum because it's the minimum. And then they end up accruing more interest you're, than they're you're accruing interest on interest. Exactly. And then that's how they're like, I've paid off $60,000 and I still owe them a hundred. Yeah. But I only took out 60,000. Yeah. Uh, and that's how that happens is because they're just not paying enough. Yeah, exactly. Like they're not, but is that the fault of the person who's like, oh, this is my minimum payment? Or is that just really sus messaging on, the, duper, on, the, part there, of the, on the part of the lenders? There's dupers and dupees, right? So the student... Of course they're dupees. But we're talking about protecting the dupees. We're not talking about eliminating the dupees because that's well, what Hitler tried to do. That's kind of what I want to try and do. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> um, just so we're clear. <laughs> just so we're clear, I, I'm advocating for genocide of dumb people. No, I get it. There's the dupers and the dupees, but like... Unfortunately, one of the main functions of government is protecting the dupees from the dupers. And mo and for clarity, the dupers is usually the government. Yeah, well, the government... Like, every time um, you're making a fucking loan payment and shit, like, the government's taking a cut, right? Like, they make money from the fucking... When they guarantee loans and shit, they make a cut, right? Yeah. Which is gross. Okay, so there's a Kilkenny Irish cream ale. I don't know if that sounds great or gross. Do you want me to Irish cream you? Anyway, on that note, we're going to transfer into the segment that we call Shot Call, or the part of the show where you, the, you, the audience, can pick the shot that we take. Uh, today we are uh, taking the old the, the sponsor of this show... Old Smoky Tennessee Whiskey Habanero Mango version. Uh, Tennessee Old Smoky, please reach out to us. We drink this all the time. What are the odds that the people that own Tennessee Old Smoky uh, would agree with a single goddamn thing that we have to say? I think it's probably zero. So here's the thing. Do we really have a hard stand? Is there anything you actually care about? No, really, no. Yeah, me neither. No. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm a, no. I, I, like, like, as I like to say, I'm fucking, um, I'm a, I'm a radical centrist. You could make a compilation of all the times that I, like, was a hypocrite on this show and had, like, differing opinions. And that'd be, but th that's the show. 90% <laughs> of those opinions are just me just talking anything. You can just say whatever you want and no one stops you. It's hilarious. Except for Elon Musk. Trying to buy Twitter and sh silence you. I mean, not trying to buy Twitter. He did successfully. Anyways, thank you, um, Old Smokey, for sponsoring this entire show. Please reach out to me. No, I like some... Um, some people were just theorizing about the idea of uh, Musk taking Twitter private. And just having it okay. as a pet project because Twitter is a, currently is like a lower stock price than when it had its IPO. Well, after like it's just been a bad investment the whole way. Well, and now Jack Dorsey has pretty much sold off everything. He's not the CEO anymore. Like, right. He doesn't care anymore. Like Twitter is a utility at this point and literally only a benevolent billionaire probably should own this company. Good thing he's a benevolent bil dictator. I yeah, mean, just like I mean, billionaire. Take like, it off the fucking... Uh, take it off the fucking stock market. Like, it's not, it's not a good investment. Like empirically, it's just not. Unless you own Twitter stock when Elon Musk bought it, and then it went up forty five percent. Yeah, but then what? Like, I so he. This is this is one of the points of the this conversation was if he implements what he's talking about, like you know, opening up the free speech. Um, unban Trump. Unban Trump. Exactly. Unban Trump. Unban Trump. So you may. You may increase traffic, you may increase engagement, but the thing is, it's not a engagement business, it's not a traffic business, it's a digital marketing business. And if people aren't willing to put their ads next to neo-Nazis... Unban the ISIS accounts! Unban the ISIS accounts! Literally. Like, that's why that's why these companies do this, is because their advertisers are fucking telling them to do it. Yeah, no shit. So, it's like OnlyFans considered dumping adult content because MasterCard told them to. Like Right. So it let's say he does these things. He changes these policies to Twitter. It's gonna be it's bad for the business in terms of bottom line. It's bad for the stock price. 
Like it's it's fucking bad all around. Will I stop tweeting? No. Well, exactly. It's not. <laughs> Twitter should not go away. It's just not a good investment. But it should be there. Somebody should own it. Somebody should somebody should run it. Somebody should fund it. Trump. 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 He can't afford it. He's fucking broke. Put him on the board. Put him on the board. Mm. Mm. That would be great. Just gets like an honorary board seat just because. Well, Elon's on the board now. You well, see yeah, the, but he the, bought his way in. The CEO tweeted like, hey, we're up for... It's like the the meme of like, he's crying behind the smiling mask. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we're great to welcome Elon to the board. Like, he's going to hostile take over this entire company, I think. That's the idea, yeah. I think this is step one is buying yeah, nine and a half percent. Absolutely. And then step 60 is completely eradicate all his enemies <laughs> like yeah like the process can you imagine being at twitter like in the finance department being like oh so elon musk just uh, bought all the shares <laughs> that sold today okay that happened like 90 straight sessions where he bought every available share that was being sold well that's how you do it i think yeah right it was uh, because somebody sitting there buy 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 under four percent of a comp four point nine percent of a company you don't have to report it to the irs or the mm -hmm. um what do you call it? fcc sec um yeah so, so then that's he, how you sneaky buy companies is you buy up blocks of like five percent with different companies and then right so he bought when he got to 9.6 uh he then changed his apparently you have to also file this um being a, being rich is tough uh he changed his i guess role or status with the investment from inactive to active. Okay. And that's when shit hit the fan. So inactive would be like, I just own a bunch of shares because I think it's going right. to make more money. Active means like, I'm going to fucking try and do something. Right. Okay. And you apparently have to say that yep. with the yep. government. Okay. Okay. I didn't know that. So that they know. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're an inactive member and you start making moves, like, okay, well, do we consider you an active part of this business or no? Now you're just you manipulating have to... the stock. Right. Like, yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> That's interesting. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. Stonks. I wonder if you have to do that here. It's le I guess there's there's so many less eyes on the Canadian stock. Like I was going to say, what are you going to do that on green? Yeah, the well, the Toronto Stock Exchange has some actual tech companies, right? Like Shopify. Shopify. Is it, I'm, in I'm, Toronto. I'm assuming it's on TSX. Yeah. 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 Well, I think or, they probably have. Or a, some some of it. Yeah. They have an American listing too. I would assume. Yeah. Um, like what, forty billion, sixty billion? Shopify, something like they're yeah. fucked. When like um, yeah, one of the Uber founders Canadian. Not that that affects anything with the stock, but no, <laughs> one of them is Canadian. When like some of those bit like all the banks and shit, they're fucking massive, right? Like TD and right. shit. Like yeah, Canada's you know. banking and uh, resource extraction. The big five. And CBC. The big five banks are all within our top 10 um, highest traded stocks. Yeah, that our makes biggest, sense. biggest market cap. I think if I was going to sell out and get a corporate job, I'd probably go work for RBC. I hate RBC. I love uh, RBC. Man, RBC has been so fucking mean to me. It's an amazing consumer bank. Yeah, for my business, they have been... Don't fucking get an RBC account for your business. They have been so fucking bad to me. So here, the worst one, they they, they always do... Sh they've been doing shitty shit, but then banks just are shitty to small business. Yeah. But the fucking nail in the coffin where I'm like, okay, fuck these guys, was... So we had uh, every business account gets like... Uh, manager assigned to your account, right? Yeah. And they have like hundreds, I guess, but like it's someone that you can reach out to. Yeah. So we had like a really pressing question about something like some sort of debt I won't get too far into. And I call him like six times over a week yeah. to try and get a fucking hold of this guy. He finally calls us back and is like, or no, emailed us back and was like, hey, actually, uh, stop contacting me. Um, basically said, you're not worth my time. You're too small. Hmm. And I'm just like, cut, like, he's like, yeah, if you need help, call the 1 800 number. Bye. <laughs> Sheesh. And I'm like, I, I, Jesus. I, fucking say, I had a totally different experience when I worked um, with Arneo, I guess, bigger business. Uh, we'd like call our banker. We like, we were setting shit up. So we were struggling with TD because they were really inflexible. Like, we had to come in, we had to make meetings with them. And it was like, we're like, okay, we want to have like this, the signing authority structured in this and this way. They're like, oh, sorry, we can't. We have like one way to do it, and that's it. It's an, so you get A or B, and that's it. 
no flexibility. And it's like, okay, well, if you have an inflexible system for who's able to access bank accounts, like that, how is that a business feature? Like every business <laughs> is fucking different. Yeah. Owner structure and also logistics. Yeah. Like, do doesn't make any just, sense. Do you think they were just bullshitting you? No, it was like fucking, he was, he was with that bank. Um, Arnie was with that bank for like 10, 15 years. Like it was had everything with them, all his mortgages, like fucking million, tens of millions of dollars of business with them. And they were still stonewalling them. My worst experience with TD was um, when my grandfather died. Mm -hmm. My grandmother had all her bank accounts with TD and she was like trying to do something like move a bunch of money or something. Or like she sold the house. Right. So she was like trying to move a bunch of money. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you need to get the, your, your husband to co-sign this. And she's like, he's dead. And they're like, well, we still need his signature. <laughs> and she's like, I can bring you a death certificate. And it was like a um, three month long process. Yeah. That had to go all the way up to like federal corporate levels before she could like get. It's like, don't you have a process for this? I, f I feel like this happens every day. Literally. People die, right? Like, like literally then, every day. And then it's like, but and in the meantime, it's like she couldn't have her money. Exactly. Like, and it's like, like she you, couldn't take out money. Like, yeah, it's you like, can't pay the for the funeral. You can't yeah. fucking pay your mortgage. Like, that's... And they were, and they were, I, I was, pr I was like, what, 14 at the time. But I just remember them being really mad. Like my, my mother and my grandmother, yeah. like just being like fed up with these fucking people. Yeah. My family got really fucked up by Scotiabank. Um, they get my parents. <laughs> it's funny that we all di different bad stories about different big banks. <laughs> like... Yeah, so they they got a mortgage approval. Like pre, this is should be bulletproof, right? You get a mortgage pre approval. You go shopping, right? You go sell your house. It's like it's you have a time frame. You, it's you're, a contract. You're right? pre approved yeah, for like 120 be. days or yeah, whatever. 120, yeah. And so they took this. They went and sold the house. Uh, new, buyers were taking possession. They found a new house. They lined up the possession dates. Went to go sign papers. They're like, oh, sorry, we've uh, reneged on your approval. That's You're going to have to go through the entire process. I thought it was a contract. You can't just do that, right? <laughs> they just fucking canceled it. So then we had to rent. And then what are you going to do? Sue them? Yeah, we had to right? rent. Like... We had to rent for six months while they went and tried to go. Th they went through the entire process all over again, and they made it twice as hard. That's wild. Yeah, it was. I remember we just like for six months, we were just like renting this random ass house in the middle of town. It was really weird. That's wild. Uh, but that wasn't the story so rbc um right so we had, we had this awful time with td bank and then we went to rbc got a business account manager and we just kind of like talked up like we want to switch everything over to you like we have all this business we have these mortgages we do real estate uh like ton we have a big merchant account we've got all this shit going on so our business manager like i could call him i could text him after hours he would respond to me he would show up 7 30 a.m the next day on my doorstep with papers let me sign it and then he'd run back to the fucking office process it on his side bring back his version of the papers have another meeting and like he was doing the running around yeah i think that's as soon as you like hit the like 10 million dollar mark right then they like care. so he dumped your call because he was at my office because he was at your office <laughs> yeah that's exactly yeah. what i was yeah. and also with uh with the tech programs if you get into the uh the the tech programs like the like uh you can beep that if you want to be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we, we got a business manager that was specifically meant for technology. This is Winnipeg. There's not a lot of them. So we had, there was like these two business managers and they were basically one step below corporate. So they kind of get to skip all the levels of bureaucracy and bullshit. They had like an extra level of funding that was aside from their branch. And they could just spend so much time with us. They put in tons of work. They help us write business plans, apply for shit, look for grants. Like they would come to events with us, introduce us to people. It was like they were the yeah. I remember they meet, were yeah. meeting your banker at uh, the TDS party. Yeah, yeah. They were just around all the time. They were super chill. And like, and then RBC actually paid for an event, and like they sent out the vice president and uh, a bunch of whatever high up people nationally all to an event at my office that I, like, I spoke at and I got to like chill with the vice president of RBC. That's like, wild because I've had such a goddamn bad experience with them. Yeah, but is it? But that's the thing about banks is if you are not in a, um, a in a segment or what do you call it, in, in, in an industry that they are paying attention to because yeah. they are like they are the kings of fads. Like this year yeah. we are spending money on leasehold improvements. Next year we're spending money on new business loans. That's a joke. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, we're spending money on like you know he uh, home credit equity for people that don't need credit anymore. Exactly, Perfect. home equity lines of credit for people that are done spending money. Yeah, uh, like they will focus on certain things, and like technology is always something that every bank wants in on because our well RBC is the venture fund, which is one of the biggest um, like early seed investing funds in the world. Yeah. Like they invest early and big in fucking massive tech companies and they have extremely, extremely high risk tolerance in that fund. But like, then they have an extremely low risk. Like, so I have a credit card with RBC, yeah. a business credit card for $5,000. I had to put up a $5,000 GIC to guarantee the credit card. Yeah. It was a 12 month GIC. And then I was promised that at the end of the mature maturity, I could take the GIC and then it would have the credit card. Right. Yeah. As long as I didn't make a payment, miss a payment for 12 months. Yeah. It's been three and a half years. They haven't given me my fucking GIC back. Jeez. And I keep asking. I'm every like three months. I'm like, hey, can I have my fucking card back? Or my sorry, my, I have my fucking money back, and they won't give it to me. I've had a five thousand dollars GIC with them for like almost three years. It's like sorry, I think it was like two and a half. But I feel um, like you should probably go barking up a chain somewhere. I I don't know what to do. And then and then so we run. You know, I ran four hundred thousand dollars last year through them. I've never missed a credit card payment. Yeah. I've never overdrafted. And I'm not credit worthy enough to have a $5,000 credit card. I'm going to say as a consumer, they would have offered you a $5, a $5 well, million dollar credit card at this point. I bank with BMO personally, Bank of Montreal. And um, I have a $15,000 personal credit card that's not tied to my business. And my last... Um, uh, pay stub or not pay stub, but like my my 2000 last time I filed taxes said I made under 20 grand. Right. Um, I have a fifteen thousand dollar personal credit card. They just fucking gave. Me, I log into my banking app. This is my favorite thing. I log into my banking app the other day. And they're like, oh yeah, you've been pre-approved for a thirty thousand dollar line of credit at Prime Plus Four. So it's a six percent line of credit. Thirty thirty thousand dollars in cash. There's very complicated finance reasons as to why banks would be offering massive lines of credit to everybody, like high, mid, low tier creditors. I don't make any money. It doesn't matter. They got they have a massive incentive to give out money right now. Well, and you, you, well, the, I think one of the I was kind of talking to people in the industry, and they were telling me that because rates are going to go up, yeah, they're trying to fucking give out as much credit as they can at a lower rate before rates go up. Right. Um, they're trying to dump cash. Yeah, it's it's also an inflation thing. Yeah, like because their cash is devaluing at seven percent annually, so they give it to you at six. They just made one. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So as soon as I use a cent on there, it's better than them having that cent in a fucking bank account somewhere, yeah. right? It's Do a they lot have of bank things. accounts in their own bank. Huh? <laughs> Who holds the bank's money? <laughs> well, Bank of Canada, right? The Fed. Yeah. Well, the Bank of Canada is our Fed. What? <laughs> Um, it's, but anyway, it's all but fiat though It is all fiat yeah Well the banks in Canada only have to have What is it 10% of deposits On hand to right. be a bank So if more than 10% of people Demanded their money back they would just go under They carry more though At least recently the liquidity has been At record highs in the last couple of years Thanks pandemic uh, oh, One time well, I, Thanks uh, money printer Yeah. <laughs> one time I uh, tried to take like 10 grand out of a uh, out of a small branch on Lake Henderson. Yeah. Uh, they ran out of hundreds. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> if you want to take out more than 10 grand, go downtown. You got to go downtown, yeah. Um, they carried something like a million on hand. Because Downtown? How, probably more, surely. How in the fuck would you rob the, like the concourse RBC? Is that what it's called? What? Like the, the underground? Yeah. Yeah, so... Concord. Our, concourse, yeah. Yeah, concourse. So our city is uh, it's really fucking cold. True. And um, our main downtown core, like the main intersection... <laughs> Isn't open to pedestrians. Well, and it's like the windiest fucking place... Uh, in North America, In I North think. America, yeah. yeah. Like, today... I w okay, so today it's wind windy and snowy. I was three blocks away. I could see the tornado at Portage in Maine. Like, it was fucking visible. And I drove my van into it, and it just literally... Whoosh, hit me from the side, and, like, it came through the... the like the weather flashing in my window and like I got blasted with snow in the face because it hit me so hard. That's funny. And like it was so fucking windy there. 
and it's even worse around the buildings. Like if you walk out of a building, you can literally get slammed up against the wall. So you know what's funny? So nobody walks there. So, so you go underground. That intersection, they wanted they had we had a referendum actually, yeah. which is the only referendum I've ever participated in to open it to pedestrians or not. And it yeah. and it got it remained closed. But I remember they uh they paid the city of Winnipeg paid for two studies done by like a Chicago or Seattle fucking based research firm didn't release the results of the first one. Cause I think it wasn't, didn't fit their narrative, right? Released the results of the second one that said, yeah, we should open Port of Germain. It's going to be good. Uh, and then one of their things, which I just started laughing at was, Oh, and then like highs is right there. Like some, re- some fancy restaurants can open for outdoor dining, which they have now. No, not on that side of the road though. Their patios like, Right, you know, sheltered, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and then they have these like diagrams of like people with patio, like it looks like a fucking French bistro on the. Oh, this is the windiest goddamn like. The, yeah, you could not have a you could not have a bistro on this corner. Well, like, you know, that, all of your food would fly off the you table. You could tell that this wasn't written by someone who ever like, lived here. Eighty percent of the time, it's too windy to eat at a table without like having to consciously weight shit down. And also, Winnipeg doesn't do outdoor dining. We do patios. It's a right. different culture, a different vibe. Right. Like patio dining or patios are more drinking than eating. Right. It's and it's it's smaller menus. You do light, pu- light pub food. Yeah. Like you don't go and fucking get a steak dinner and sit outside. You just don't. Mm-hmm. That's just not the culture here. No. Um. Yeah. But yeah. So they, they currently have a patio uh, and it's got like seven foot glass walls around it highs does yeah yeah because it's windy uh no because they opened it uh during covid when, during covid when they couldn't have people inside yeah yeah but i mean now that it's there yeah obviously they put up the glass barriers because yeah. fucking windy but anyways fucking uh, windy. so the concourse goes underground under this intersection and connects all the main buildings it's like a three-sided three-cornered intersection it's kind of weird and all the and the buildings kind of branching out from that, so you can go all the way from those this intersection, walk through downtown, and there's like some tunnels are above ground, some are below ground. You can get all the way to the convention center, you know where the jets play, and it's all connected. But the bank is underground on this intersection that yeah. is like not pedestrian accessible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's no parking. Yeah. There's no parkades. Yeah, where'd you where'd you take the money once you stole it? <laughs> like, if, let's say you hold up this place, like you yeah. guns, whatever. You well, get in there, it would take you literally five to ten, like probably about, let's say two to three minutes running to get to out. get from the bank to the street level. Yeah. There's well, nowhere to park. You'd have to jump over a four foot concrete yeah, barrier yep. into, the <laughs> into, a, into the road, into the road, into a vehicle. Well, and here's the thing, but I will counter that by saying that whoever's robbing the concourse downtown winnipeg rbc probably is on meth and doesn't isn't thinking of how they're going to get away right no and if and if you did have the skill set to do it you'd be robbing someplace else you'd be like that's a bad target well there's like, also cops everywhere yeah there's a lot of cops down there or what do they i've never actually been because meth heads. do they buzz you in <laughs> no, down there no it's wide open okay no it, it's know. it's wide open it's really nice because it's like it's where it's 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 like half a block from like the grain exchange. Like it's it's wide open. It's yeah. really nice branch. You get great service there. You should. Um... But it's all underground, so it's like all these fucking. I used to work in the concourse for about. I worked underground in one of these offices for about it's, a year. So here's the thing. It's unironically kind of nice. It's really nice, but sketchy as fuck. There's no windows, obviously. The, well, no win- But there's a and there's a lot of transient people that go through well, there because it's I, downtown. I was in the news section though. I was under the Fairmont. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was kind of disconnected. I was like on an offshoot. So around me was like a Starbucks, like a nice bistro, and yeah. there was a couple of nice offices. I was in a marketing well, office. A, Lots of a, glass. It was really beautiful. The, but what's that cocktail bar under there called? Like Underwear Highs is kind of on that side. There's a know. bar there. It's fucking nice. I, I went there with CN once. It was I fucking. I don't remember. Yeah, it's really good. It's a nice sushi bar. Yeah, I word. But yeah, it was it was really fucked doing desk work down there because i'd show up at 8 9 a.m you know beautiful summer day and i go down into the concourse go into the office it's like it's all bright all the lights are bright there's lots glass of glass walls down there yeah, like, yeah it's super nice but i go into this back into this office 
and it's like it's kind of it's bright and it's cheery but also it's all artificial and you stay down there all day and either you can stay till three and you go out and it's sunny or you could go stay in there till 10 p.m and you go and it's dark and you can't tell the difference like yeah. you have no reference there's not even well, like or it's winter and you go out at three and it's dark right it's dark and dark when you go in dark when you leave yeah like it was just it was depressing 100 percent of the time is the point it yeah. was fucking awful to like, be fair I, I work and live in a basement so i feel like that would just be well but you have a window right there you can tell if it's up if it's light outside uh, yeah, yeah you didn't have that much Okay. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. yeah. Like the nearest light access was four or five doors away. It was. I think it really epitomizes what it's like to be in Winnipeg (laughs) to (laughs) fucking run a business or work in that concourse. Like, like, God bless your soul. That is a rough place to (laughs) be. We have a lot of. We have a ton of tunnels under Winnipeg, actually. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, you can actually. uh, I don't think like anyone can do it. I think you have to have like a pass. Like a, a card. Those you YouTube actually, guys could do it. Yeah. Well, you can actually walk from the downtown concourse to the HSC. Right. It's like 30K. Yeah. You can actually walk that. I think you have to like have a pat thing to swipe. Yeah. But. um. Yeah. There's tunnels everywhere. Uh, the Half the city is. And then uh, we have a lot of. Tun- my uh, my cousin was actually really interested in this. Um, They have a ton of the tunnels that are like cemented off. Right. Um, Because we used to have a uh, monorail system in Winnipeg. So all the access table uh, tunnels are still there, but the entrances are just, you know. God, how much better would Winnipeg be if all the transit was underground? If those, well, no, they they were above ground. Yeah, but imagine if were, all the all the transit, like all of our rapid transit lines. What if everything yeah, well, was underground? Well, fuck yeah, dude. What? Have you been to Toronto? <laughs> like, like not far. Like literally, just like you have a street level. It'd be like four inches or four feet of concrete well, you can and do, then train. Like you, it, you don't need to dig a tunnel. You just dig a trench. Here, here's the thing. And then put you a can, bridge over it. You can do above or above, below, right? Yeah. Below Tor- is way cheaper. Toronto does both. They have, but like Vancouver does above. Right. Right. Toronto has a Because it's rock. Yeah. We're in the prairie. It's fucking dirt. Just dig. Yeah, exactly. And it's cold. And, uh, but anyway, but there's, we have a ton of tunnels that are like inaccessible, but there's a couple, uh, Every downtown business has like an entrance to these tunnels in their basement. Okay. That are like blocked off. But apparently, a couple of the businesses have like unblocked them. Yeah. I mean, Jackhammer, let's get to it. Yeah. And uh, you can get down there. It's like illegal, but you can. And oh, so, so that's she, where all the COVID parties have been happening. Yeah. Well, she was like into that uh, because there's like ghost tour. There's a ghost tour oh, that'd in be downtown so sick. Winnipeg that goes down there. Yeah. And that'd be like, so sick. Yeah, yeah. So there's a couple. Apparently, there's a couple. I won't say anymore because I don't want to like blow up these people's. <laughs> operation here because it is illegal mm-hmm. but you can you can get down there apparently so that'd be so sweet it's just kind of sketchy but so what you're saying is you need to buy a shitty bar somewhere downtown and then fucking drill down <laughs> drill down and yeah. then set up the real like speakeasy slash nightclub <laughs> like under my nightclub <laughs> in the in the illicit yeah that's yeah. where like all the hard drugs have yeah um well have you seen those uh the videos of those guys that broke into the paris catacombs yeah that's what i was thinking that's about. sketchy as fuck oh god it's so scary have you ever seen that movie um the found footage style you know what i mean by found footage yeah well thank god I just no. learned the term today, so if really? you didn't if you didn't know it, I'd be upset. Really? I like Blair Witch. Like... Oh yeah, I know. I know the concept. I just never heard the term. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I, I I love I love the concept most of the time. The, yeah, uh, yeah. Cloverfield was awful. Clover, really? Cloverfield one was fine. They remade it like Cloverfield Paradox. That was terrible. That was terrible. Yeah, that's what uh, I was thinking. Cloverfield about. one was fine. It wasn't great. Uh, the yeah, best. It, it was fine. Blair Witch is obviously the classic. Yeah, Blair Witch um, is one that like was cited in this podcast like as bringing it back yeah that was like uh the other uh vhs the first one is really good as well my favorite one is when they're i I can't remember the name of it but they're doing like a paranormal investigation in this hospital okay and it's not one of the paranormal paranormal activities no No, definitely not paranormal Uh, activity one was made for like 10 grand they were all made cheap the blumhouse special baby yeah no, my favorite one is that. So they're doing an investigation in this hospital, and is one. It's it's similar to Blair Witch, in where they, uh, they have, like an, a never ending night, okay. where like time stops making sense and being linear, and uh, so they're and all of a sudden the hallways get really long and they're like running up up the stairs like okay we got to get out of this but we got to get to the roof and they're running up the flights of stairs but they just like run like 11 flights in a three story building and they just can't get up there like 
As Above, So Below. Yeah, okay, yeah, so that's that, what it's called. Yeah, that was that's, the movie, that's uh, fucking terrifying that was the, movie. That was a fucking creep. And that's the so, same one. Is it like reality warps? So, like the tunnels start changing. So does time. Yeah, there's a movie called As. What is it? As Above. As Above, So Below. And it's a movie about them going. I forget what the plot is, but they go into the Paris catacombs. It's like a bunch of kids that want to go and they like get a no, local I think guy. They're trying to find a guy. They're trying to find like their father. Or maybe it's Isn't ju- it like... journalist uh, investigating. I don't, I don't know. know something weird. But anyway, but as they go through, and for those of you that don't know, the, the Paris catacombs are these like the longest man made tunnel system in the world. And it goes under Paris like miles. And it's where and, it's where people were hiding in the in World Wars, well, and the, where a the, lot well, of the battles. I were think fought. they dug it in like the 1600s, and that's where they used to bury people. Right, or so like, it's, it's full of skeletons. Full of yeah, there's like real skulls and shit. And I I think they have a little bit open for like tourists. Yeah, but like 90 percent of it is inaccessible. Yeah, but there's like I've seen some guys on YouTube like break in and get in there. Right. Anyway, but this movie as above so below. They go into this catacomb or whatever, and it starts relatively normal. But the farther they get, they they end up going into hell. Yeah, and that's kind of the plot. And it's it's creepy visuals. Yeah, like, they end up. Yeah, they end up in hell. So that's just how I remember, or that's just what comes to mind as soon as I uh, think about like, Oof. oh, it's going to the Winnipeg fucking tram yeah. system, and then I just think of this shit, and I'm like, ah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, tinfoil hat time. Um, Should I get the tinfoil hats? No, this is too brief. Damn it. We haven't worn the tinfoil hats. Those, <laughs> yeah, no shit. Those movies are made by the globalists to keep us out of those places. Okay. Like, I like, those, like cautionary um, tales for children, but uh, for I, grown I, ass people. Every so often I see on my TikTok algorithm these guys that explore like abandoned mansions and shit. Yeah. Pretty cool. I I was going on with a girl for a while who was really obsessed with that stuff, and we yeah. went into some abandoned buildings. It was pretty scary. The scariest one I, I did. What did was, you do in these abandoned buildings, Tyler? Oh, lots. Um, Ooh. The the craziest one was an abandoned uh, grain elevator. That seems dangerous. It was uh, in the middle. It was like in the middle of a field. Yeah. Like there's nothing around for miles, as grain elevators are. Wow. But the thing about the prairies, it, you put your head up ten feet, you can see really far. True. Twenty feet, you feel like you're on top of the world. True. Thirty feet, it feels like you're on the moon. Tall man. I was at like 200 feet. Yeah. It was fucked. Like, yeah. you could see the, and I was up there like during a sunset. It was like in the middle of summer. So like all the wheat's waving and the, it, fucking amazing. Picturesque. And like this, this thing looked really sketchy from the outside. Like it was going to fall down. But like if you actually look at it, the, the structure's all timber frame. It's super solid. But the ladder going to the top is just like a wooden, you know, rungs up between two massive timber joists. And you get up to the top, and half the floor is missing. Yeah. So you gotta like watch where you walk, or you'll fucking fall. And like the opening below your feet is like sixty feet free fall. Yeah. yeah. Fucking terrifying. Yeah, it's sketchy as fuck. And like we stuck our feet out like through the wall, because of massive holes in the wall. Yeah. And just watched the sunset. It was awesome, unbelievable experience. Uh, I could take it there. I still know where it is. Let's go. Uh, it's yeah. Probably falling down by now. No, it's still there. It's like. Five years ago, and I saw it probably last year, year before. Hmm. It's still there. It's not that old. Like it just got abandoned, and when you stop taking care of shit, uh, the siding falls off real quick. Yeah, true. And I, we walked through the house that was on this property, and it was like, oh wow, this is like this well, thing about just die and then like yeah, like this is the thing about Manitoba. It's like you find a place you think it's super old. You're like, oh, this is cool. It's probably haunted. And you're walking through. It's like, oh no, this was renovated in the 80s oh i see a nintendo <laughs> ds on the table yeah <laughs> it's like oh no the, the windows just blew out and it looks really dirty <laughs> like it's not old well, there's nothing my, fucking old here one of my favorite things about like farm country is like you have the decrepit falling apart barn right next to the brand new barn because mm-hmm. it's just like why take down the barn it's too much work just build another one right beside well, it wait like, long enough for hipsters to get into old barn wood and you sell it for profit yeah literally <laughs> fuck uh we gotta take a second shot here anytime we take oh thank god <laughs> Every time we take a shot that's under forty percent on the show, we have to take a second one. So this is our us taking a second shot. Shots. Mm. So spicy. Why is it spicy? So I'm working on a house right now. That's um, for someone like Willows. Hello. Uh, a habitual drinker. I, I'm not a habitual drinker. I'm a... Um, alcoholic. M- man... <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> Thank you. It's like, I it's went, not a habit. I'm dependent. Yeah, I, <laughs> I want to be mad at you, but continue. I'm, 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 telling I'm saying it as a, I'm saying it as a joke, but I'm in the same camp. I'm crying. For those of you that have regular uh, hangovers, this would be the worst house ever. Who has hangovers? Just keep drinking. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, so this house is all white. Ugh. The outside of it, the inside, the floors, the walls, the cabinets, the counters. The people that live there. The showers, the white, definitely the people. <laughs> uh, like, I'm talking like, oh, what color grout? Oh, white. Oh, what color paint? Oh, let me white. guess. Let me let guess. Me, <laughs> let me guess. Let me guess. What about the towel? Tr- uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, nah, I, I got it. I got, I got the idea. Like, there's not a single color in this house, which is kind of weird. Like, it's like, you, you think about really modern house, and it's got the weird, like, you know, most houses have a roof that, you know, put your hands into the shape of a roof. Now we invert that. That's the roof. That seems inefficient. Yeah. Like, that it's seems like, like a bad use of space. Yeah, it's like, oh, you want all of the snow and ice to, to be in the middle of your home? Yeah. Is do, this a new build? Do this. Yeah, brand So new. they haven't survived a winter yet. No. <laughs> so we'll, 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 well see. There, there's a lot of suspicious dripping noises. When I'm when I was in the ensuite, like Not a, ideal. <laughs> in the master bathroom, I could hear a lot of like really loud like dunk 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 dunk. Maybe it's that been was my hard. wet ass pussy. Probably, dunk <laughs> dunk. But anyways, really sussos. Uh, I like the, the the problem is I really like the elements of the design of it, and what's really interesting is he's made this whole place to be handicap accessible. Like, all the light switches are, like, waist height. Okay. And, like, all the thermostats and stuff that's usually face height yeah. is, like, stomach height. It's, okay. like, everything is super low. Like, when you go turn on the light, it's, like, here. Yeah. Like, you just put your hand out straight from your waist, and there it is. Instead of, like, putting your hand up for a light switch. It's, everything's really low. Joke's on you, idiot. Just make it smart, and then you can talk to it with your voice instead of... Right? It's, like, <clears throat> I feel like the innovation's going in, the weird, in a weird direction here. But I'm like, I asked the the GC, and I'm like, why is everything in here built, like, handicap accessible? And he's like, well, uh, he's like, they like to do that just as, like, a standard, you know, just in case. I'm like, okay, well, I get that. I'm like, well, what about the owner? He's like, like, are they in a wheelchair? He's like, no, not yet. And I'm like, that's a weird way to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> not yet? Are you counting on it? Jesus Christ, maybe, that's more maybe of it. Maybe he wants to befriend somebody. I, I guess. it's, But also, it's like, it's a luxury home on a very expensive piece of property. It's like it's right off of Academy uh, in River Heights, which is one of our most expensive one of neighborhoods. The top three expensive neighborhoods in the city. And the weird part is, it's not like old River Heights. Every single house on this entire block is brand new. Yeah. And every house on the other side of the street is all old. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what they ripped down, but it's all brand new homes. And so this is a high budget buyer. But they have a basement suite. That they're like renting? Yeah. Interesting. It's a purpose-built basement suite hey, with, with separate access. Here's the thing. That's if also save, all white. If I can save $1,000 <laughs> on my rent, <laughs> even if I'm a fucking multimillionaire. Well, that's the thing. Like, this isn't... Well, maybe it's for their kid or something. I don't I, know. I don't... You wouldn't build it as a rental suite, though. Like, it's got fire doors, <laughs> separate entrances. Oh, like... so it's like all up to code as a rental yeah. suite. Yeah. Okay. No, it's like a separate... It's almost like a secondary house maybe they're there. planning on renting the entire thing i don't know this is what's weird it's like you build the you hire the people that hire a specific architect whose shtick is he makes everything white <laughs> um, are, probably are building a rental he's also a university a university of manitoba professor for architecture he's like the head of the faculty wait the person whose house it is or no, the person who's, you desi- hired? who's designing oh, it okay who hired us and you're you do exclusively like top end homes. Yeah, for architects typically. Yeah. And this architect was the professor to my business partner and also to the guy we just hired, also his design degree and was under this professor. So what are you saying? Why the fuck is luxury real estate moving towards rental suites? Because that doesn't seem like it I don't think there's much precedent for that. That what seems interesting mark? to me. Yeah, who's like and this is how, Winnipeg. Houses how, are not expensive here. Well, houses are getting more expensive and people are getting poorer. So who's going to rent a luxury house? Exactly. Like the rent on that shit would be a lot. Like just buy a house, in a right? ba- And you're renting a basement. Yeah. It's going to be a high rent price. Yeah. I mean, it'll look really nice. It's properly 
properly designed, maybe, really well done. Maybe there's a niche there that we don't know about. Maybe that's, what they... that's what I'm saying. Like this is a world I don't understand. Hmm. Who's out there paying two thousand bucks a month to rent a basement well, guess, like, in Winnipeg? Not a basement, obviously, but you were renting a very expensive condo at yeah. some point, right? Like, there's obviously a there's a market for everything. There's a market for expensive uh, rentals. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um. So maybe this is just kind of an extension of like you know. Yeah, I guess so. You just want a different thing, but like, what person is going out there and contracting this architect? You're like. My point is, it's a specific request to get this guy. 90% of people wouldn't want to live in a house like this. It's all white. Yeah. Uh, and then they go and buy this land. They go through all the trouble of the design process. It takes years. Yeah, of course. And at some point, they're like, it's going to have a rental suite. That's one of our <laughs> conditions. Like, we're going to have our dream home. But the basement is somebody else's. Maybe you're misinterpreting what they're trying to do. I don't. Maybe, but like it's, it's maybe very. Maybe they just wanted it. I don't know. Separately, you like, can't really change the function of that basement. Like it's got a fully built kitchen. It's got extra bedrooms. It's got living rooms. Maybe like, they, I don't know. You maybe, can't just roll that into your house. Maybe they have a fucking co cousin or something that comes around every once a month and they. I so don't maybe know. it's a very specific need. Yeah. Yeah. Who the fuck knows, right? Like. Like I've I've seen. Well, I'm sure, you, and you've told me stories about you building weird ass shit in people's houses. Luxury two family homes, like because they want it. Like, yeah, I, actually, that's an. I've I've heard of this one other time. It was it was literally a luxury two family home, so it was the highest price ever achieved in this neighborhood, most expensive house ever sold in this neighborhood, and it was a duplex. Interesting. Like it, yeah, it, it's it, like it looked like. It looked like a one. It just looked like a massive mansion, but you it know was. What I but bet. it was a bi-level two-family home. You know what? I if I had to wager, swinger couples, either swinger couples or as Indians. That <laughs> big eye Indians, the the country. Yes, I wasn't assuming you were saying a slur for. We have American listeners. People. Christ. I'm they, sorry. I bet they st they do still say that. They back do down still there, say right? that. Yeah. Well, to be fair, the the act of government that governs the indigenous people of Canada is still called the Indian Act. So it's fine. Um, I have native friends because so they're from India. Natives are from India. All of them. That's why they're all brown. Well, on that note, let's <laughs> transfer here into the uh, final segment of the show called. Tip, 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 tip of the week, tip of the, tip of the week, tip of the, tip of the week, where Tyler and I give you a um, business or life tip that we are currently going through. And uh, my tip today, it just, it, it occurred to me, uh, I went to a funeral today for my uncle uh, Brian, rest, God rest his soul. Um, oh, Lordy. Yeah, it was kind of a weird, like it wasn't, uh, there was no service. It was mm. just like a come and go kind of thing. Okay, like a wake and a burial. No, it was. They already did the wake and the burial yesterday. So this oh. was just like a, it was in the, in in the church, but in like, I guess the church. Um, it was in small town Manitoba, Oak Bank, Manitoba. Um, so in the church they have like garage doors almost. They look nice, but that's essentially what they are. Yeah. And then when you open the garage doors, it extends into like uh what looks like a school cafeteria. Right. For like, Which every church has. Exactly. So so everything was open and there were probably 100 people there. Um, like the a average age was probably 75. Mm -hmm. And that's because there were a lot of kids there. Brought down the average. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, but, uh, and I, I didn't know him well. Like Brian, like I hadn't seen him in like, over a year, like probably over one of the one of the uncles you see at weddings and funerals, right? Mm -hmm. So I hadn't seen him in a while, so whatever. But he he died of uh, ALS, which was unfortunate, which is not a not a great one. But uh, my mother and my grandmother actually saw him the day before he passed away, which was uh, um, they were. You, you don't want to say like that's good, but uh, yeah. you know it was good that they they were able to see him and and whatever. Anyway, but I was there, and uh, we only went for like you know, we we're probably in the building for less than thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. said you know our condolences to all the family and the wife and everything and then um i was uh, i was in the corner eating a bunch of 
the veggie plate and then <laughs> and then we just kind of as you do you know and then we just kind of gave up our seats like where's we, willows uh probably by the vegetables <laughs> yeah. so it was getting um it was getting busier so we kind of gave up our seats so other people could sit it was just me and my mother and that because my grandmother who would have gone uh she, it's her side of the family uh she has covid right now oh, so right uh, surviving, thank God. She's 87 years old, so she doesn't need COVID. But um, looks like she's getting through it. But uh, and then my father, this isn't his side of the family; he doesn't really know anyone, so whatever. So I went to basically escort my mother, right? And uh, we just went for a, like half hour, and then you know said our goodbyes and went back. And I was just thinking about like I think there's a lot of value from just like going to places in person and making an appearance. And I've been saying yeah. this. I've been saying this for a long time about birthdays. Yeah, I really make an effort to, even if I'm like I literally don't have time with my work, I like to show up, take a shot, and then leave. And I've gone to birthdays for twenty minutes. Yeah, you know because. So let me one up that the best salespeople I know. Uh, I'm gonna say two names that mean nothing to nobody else. <laughs> but if you're listening to this podcast, I love you, uh, Eric Senyak. And Jonathan Lipson, staples of birthday parties. Yeah, they show up. Yep. they take the shot. They give you a ten dollar Tim's gift card. <laughs> yeah, maybe twenty, maybe fifty if I they really like they you. They were both at my last birthday, I think. <laughs> right, so. they make appearances. Yep, they don't stay long. They yep. show up late and they fuck off. They yep. give you, but they give you a gift card. Yeah, like eighty percent of the people at my party didn't give me anything. Yeah. They gave me something that was like almost entirely meaningless, like a but, Tim a Tim's card. Practical. A Tim's because card. You're buy a coffee. Exactly. A Tim's card is like a high five. Yeah. If you're not Canadian, <laughs> um, it was that level, but like I still remember being like, I gotta, like I definitely gotta go to that guy's birthday. Like I feel like I owe yeah. him one now because that yeah. was that was a really cool gesture. Yeah. Cost so little, but man, those guys, it's still like obviously I remembered it. I'm yeah. fucking mentioning it. There's fucking 40 people at my, at my party. Those are the two guys I remember. See, that's and me, obviously, but uh, oh yeah, see, <laughs> see, and that's um, yeah, I, I, I remember I did this with uh, I remember my ex complaining because I'm like, there was a birthday we had to go to in like Transcona and we had to be up early, and I'm like, we're not gonna stay long, and she's like, well, if we're not fucking staying long, just text them. Yeah. And say happy birthday instead of going. I'm like, we're fucking going. And I made the appearance and then left. And then I remember her saying something to the effect of like, when I saw, like I said, happy birthday to him and he hugged me. And she's like, there, and that was the second I knew. I'm like, oh, this is valuable. Yeah. Because she'd never thought about it before. But I think business tip wise, like as a salesman, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, there's a huge advantage to that. But then also just like, you know, showing up where um, I kind of know this side of the family. Right. I think there's there's value to human connection of like showing up in person and putting in that little bit of effort. I think there's there's a wild amount of value in that. Yeah. Show face and fuck off if you don't want to be there. Yeah. And, and that's fine. Yeah. Like we left after 20 minutes. No one was like, oh, you're leaving already. Everyone was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... You know, you got to drive back to Winnipeg, like whatever, right? Like yeah. it's, you know, and it was, and it is what it yeah, is. So. That's a good point. Yeah. I, should, I definitely should do more of that. Yeah. Because I'm definitely, I, like last couple of years have definitely been in the mindset of a, if it doesn't do anything for me, I'm not going to show up, uh, which is kind of a terrible way of looking at it. I, I yeah. I, I mean, like I know people hate on Gary Vaynerchuk, but he, his thing is always like give more than you take and then the universe will provide you with more like yeah. gratitude and like. The, the one that I always remember is that it was like New Year's Eve snowstorm in New Jersey and a woman, like old woman called, this is when he was working for the wine business, was like, hey, my wine delivery got like smashed by the delivery guy in a blizzard and Gary himself threw a case of wine in his fucking Volvo and drove to New Jersey mm -hmm. to give it, to hand deliver it to the woman. And people are always like, well, what's the ROI of that? You know? And he's like, it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Like. It's kind of fun, honestly. <laughs> yeah. But like just putting in the little bit of it, like I think yeah. that there's, and you'll there's get, a lot to be said. And you'll definitely get a little endorphin rush from it. I guarantee it. Yeah, for sure. And then just the fact that you remember people showing up to your birthday yeah. to give you. And people that I rarely speak to. Yeah. That, I think that's a, yeah. Um, 
They had, I wouldn't, no, they had no reason. They didn't know me shit. Yeah, exactly. And I, I wouldn't, like, I personally wouldn't do it for anyone that's like, I, I'm Facebook friends with, you know what I mean? That's yeah. like, it's like, but anyone that's like ever helped me out or bought any of my shit ever before, it's like, mm-hmm. I, you know, it's, I, I think it's a, if you don't believe in, you know, God, like if you believe in God, I mean, God probably wants you to do stuff like that. Mm-hmm. If you don't believe in God cosmically, the universe will reward you for that. If you don't believe in that shit either, Tyler just was able to pick out two people from his birthday party from years ago that he remembers because they did something like that. Yeah. Like there is a value there. I a hundred percent. God damn it. You distracted me so much getting into my story. I had a fantastic point and believe it or not, I got it from it's always sunny. (laughs) It's so good. Fuck. Why am I blanking on this? You're dumb. I had it. The second, I'm like, oh yeah, no, this is gold. So I was watching the episode where they fucking whacked Dennis in the head with a framing nailer. And he thought he was in rehab, but he actually just broke into someone's warehouse and was harassing people oh, for a uh, week. And it's, what's his name? Uh, Shabazz? Or, what's his name? The guy that played Shazam, right? Like that guy? Yeah. He's he like, w- you're going to be my bitch. <laughs> and it, no, it's the guy from Matchbox 20. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, the guy from Matchbox 20 is my bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, so the moral of that story is, uh, yeah, uh, we finally got Tyler to watch. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. After like me and his girlfriend are both very big fans and I'm like, it's exactly your humor. Like you'd love it. And we finally got him to watch it. So in a, in an attempt to rescue my segment here, um, <laughs> I, I had to cut out like nine minutes of silence just now. That's perfect. Just for the record. So there's the brilliance of, I'm just going to talk about the brilliance of the show is the, it's basically about being the worst possible person you could be in any given moment. Yeah. And the and then eating the consequences of it. That's why it's good. Okay, I got it. Go. Yeah, it's about the premise of the run. show. I won't even... Thank God. So, one of the main things they were saying in the show was like, if you could only walk a mile in my shoes, you'd understand how fucking hard I have it. So Danny DeVito's like saying this in a movie theater. He's talking loud. He's being annoying. He's obviously being the asshole. He's being a piece of shit. He's ruining the movie for everybody. Guy turns around. He's like, can you shut the fuck up? Like, who talks in a movie like that? He's like, if only you walked a fucking day in my shoes, you wouldn't know how hard it... Like, that's that's not a rational response to that question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just the idea of, like, if you walked a fucking mile in my shoes. So D uh, is walking a mile in Charlie's shoes. And every night, Charlie goes to bed. He takes a tin of cat food, <laughs> shovels it into his mouth as fast as he can. And then makes him sleepy. Huffs a bunch of glue. Yeah, and then he Makes sleep- him feel really gross, so he's like, oh my god, I have to go to bed, I feel awful. And then sleeps butt to butt with an old man. <laughs> yeah, and then sleeps butt to butt, pisses in a can. Yeah. Because the bathroom is scary. Yeah. And he does this because there's 50 cats in the alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> meowing and screaming all night so yeah. he can't sleep. So, he, can, yeah, yeah, so yeah. He, he does this to sleep. But he should give them kitten mittens. And then Dia's like, do you think maybe the cats are there because of all your empty cans of fucking cat food <laughs> that you're downing every day? He's like, no. The 500 cats are there because of the 10,000 rats that are around my fucking building. <laughs> He's like, trust me, this is the solution to the problem. She's like, it sounds like you're making your own problems. He's yeah. like, he's like, well, I'm stressed out tomorrow because I feel fucking sick and I couldn't sleep all night and I had to huff a bunch of glue and that makes my brain all scrambled <laughs> because I couldn't sleep glue. because of the cats, because of the rats in this fucking building that I live in because I can't afford it. Yeah. He's like, I can't go to the, I can't get a better job because I'm always fucking tired and I'm always dysfunctional. If I had a better job, I could pay more money. I wouldn't have the fucking cats to deal with. Like, if you could walk a day in my shoes, what's that fucking cyclic idea and your what is the suffering you're inflicting on yourself that is your excuse for not doing better so if if you ever find yourself saying that if you can only walk a fucking day in my shoes did this make you have like a life revelation 
in some ways because I'm like everyone is inflicting some kind of pain on themselves. Some that, some of us uh, on purpose. Some of us on purpose. Some of the, some of us just by habit. Some by whatever. Like you've done enough shit in your life, you're just in the situation you can't get out. Some of, of it because my dominatrix likes it. Right. Like maybe you're in section eight for X Y Z reason. Like you need Manitoba housing. You need rent assist. Whatever. Come back to that. Like everyone has a fucking reason. But if somebody else wanted to walk in your shoes, they'd be like, well, why do you do that? Obviously, you're making, your, you're making your life harder. You're like, but because I have this, and I have to do this because of that. And it's the cats. It's the rats. <laughs> like, yeah. everybody has that shit. And it's like, if you could just break that one piece of the chain, you could break out of your cycle. Yeah. And it just really fucked with my head because I'm like, what am I doing to myself? <laughs> how much of that in your own life is like... I guaranteed. It doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. You're doing something to yourself. Yeah. And I just think the fact that this show by Danny DeVito and a bunch of assholes like it just encapsulated that idea of human struggle so perfectly. It was fucking beautiful to me. Like I nearly cried. It was great. And uh, yeah, so fucking look at yourself and what are you doing to yourself that really, really hurts, but you really don't have to do. You really don't. Stop eating cat food is basically Stop eating cat food and huffing glue. Perfect. That's my, just just that part. Like cut the entire <laughs> cut the explanation out. <laughs> That's my advice. Perfect. Stop eating cat food and huffing glue. You know what? I could cut the entire episode. It's a two second episode of you just you saying that and then it's gone. <laughs> April Fool's. Make it the, make it the title. Stop huffing, stop eating cat food and huffing glue. Yeah. It's either it'd be that or something about banks because we talked about that for all. Anyway, uh, thank you for listening to Alcohol Beyond This Point, the podcast. That meanders while we drink. Follow us on Instagram, Alcohol Beyond This Point, uh, alcohol, linktree.com slash Alcohol Beyond This Point or link.tree, whatever the fuck it is. Um, my name is Willows. Tyler is eating cat food over there. Thanks. And we'll see you next week. Alcohol Beyond This Point podcast. This isn't two podcasters talking business. This is two business guys trying to podcast.